Right, I'm off to London town and in my car I have a bundle of hazel and uh, in the boot I have a big bouquet of strong coloured flowers. The ones I made yesterday for the clip I posted, I post tonight. Oh, complicated brain stuff. Anyway, I'm going to see the house and garden of the very, very beautiful and wonderful artist, Katie James. And the piece I did last week with Rachel Ashwell went down such a storm. I've it, It's been the easily the most viewed clip I've ever made. And I was rather inspired by the response. People really loving her very, very strong cool coloured aesthetic her shabby chic aesthetic and so I wondered if you'd like to see a bit more of a shabby chic aesthetic but with stronger colours so Katie uh, is my friend and is a fantastic artist um, and she has a real eye for decorating and her garden is stunning so let's go to London and see what we can see with Katie in leafy West London, where she has a wildflower meadow in her narrow, long West London garden. And the paint colours she's chosen for her house are amazing. Come on, off we go. So here we are in West London, in the garden of the wonderful artist, Katie James. Now, I've just got to tell you, Katie's there potting on, but I'm just going to tell you that five years ago, this garden was a stretch of empty lawn. There was nothing here. So, except for the big bay tree. So everything that you can see has been planted by Katie ever since. So I'm gonna go down the steps. We're gonna go past Katie potting on, finishing on the jobs that she's been starting. And um, we're going to going just. To have words with me about the. Um, I'm sure you're going to have words with me about some of the cuttings I've taken from an Annabelle. I no. Don't Annabelle. I think we I think can I sort might those have out. Too many leaves there. We'll but... take a leaf off. But I'm just going to walk down the garden because I want to show everybody. This is all done in the last five years. I think it's. It's so attractive. And this is the Pièce de Résistance, the wild flower meadow, which has been planted with tulips and muscari in jewel tapestry colors. I think it's the most successful. This is a little wild flower meadow. And if you look, all sorts of things coming up like corn flowers and there's this lovely person already flowering and there's a little vetch and there are nigella everywhere if i stick my finger you can't see what i'm pointing at look bluebells it's the most successful little patch of jewel colors in west london if not the world it's what 30 30 feet long? Yes. The, the story behind these, this garden, I don't think was meant to be so long, but my father said, it's very controversial, that the, the housing uh, developers uh, messed up and there was meant to be another row of houses here, which is why oh. we've ended up with such long, narrow gardens. Hence my wanting to divide it up into different rooms. It's so clever. Right, we're going to walk on down to the artist's studio, which Katie has built at the end of the garden. So we go through the little gate. And this is the cutting patch, full of the most incredible double parrot tulips, just all over the place. And round the pond... Past the really fantastic wild garlic lunch, the olive grove, and 
So look, Katie built herself an artist studio at the end. Right, let's go and talk to Katie and see what she has to say. And if you're new to the channel, you're very welcome. Please do subscribe, press the bell icon, and we'll tell you when we've got more clips coming up. And if any of the tips and tricks we give you along the way are useful, you can always buy me a coffee or better still, join my club. Uh, the links to coffee buying and club membership are in the blurb to all my clips. Do leave a co uh, comment. I always answer all my comments on YouTube and um, I hope you enjoy the clip. So here we have boards of sketches, boards of inspiration, pictures, pictures everywhere. As with every good artist, there are always lots and lots of things work in progress. Katie was recently in Morocco painting. Uh, yes, but that's um, uh, the English wood. That's an English wood, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and then here, look on the mantelpiece. And am I right in thinking the mantelpiece is just um, leaning the against skip. the wall? It came off a skip. It came off a skip and it, it no, it is attached actually, haphazardly, but it is attached. And uh, yeah, I'm really very pleased with my, oops, sorry. I love these, love these fat, juicy tulips. And it's such a good idea. You've got just clips against the wall so you can hang pictures whenever you feel the urge. And as you look round, you realise that the studio is full of views of the garden. So here is the view. And that's the view. <laughs> it's clever. But you're like many painters, you you come back to the same subject. Look, there's the view again. Yeah, but that is work in progress and it's interesting. I, I, I'm I, actually finding a way back into it with renewed in, inspiration, but also new information. So I have a lot of paintings on the go that I go back and forth from as I find new ideas. Um, it's such a good idea. Look, I love the way you've got your sketches and your maquettes on the wall. And then you've got the work in progress. And then you've got the view itself. And then you've got another work in progress. Uh, but there are the tulips that you've just painted. <laughs> yeah, there are the tulips. You're very, you work, you work with great energy, I always think. Yes, um, I, I kind of, it's, a, it's, it's, um, it can mean that you know there's some there are some failures along the way because I work too fast but the, the f faster I work to capture the light the more energy and verve gets into the painting and you're very good at painting people's dogs uh, yes look at that lovely portrait I know look at that beautiful dog I'll get, that's Dolly <laughs> and I need to send Dolly to her owner it was it it was a second commission well no it wasn't a com it was a commission and then I did an extra painting but I need to get it love to it her owner love it but look this is also where you begin to see how Katie has her own decorating aesthetic and strong throughout is green so we're going to go back up towards the house and we'll see how this green is repeated Again and again. Do you know what this crab apple is called, Katie? I do, only because I keep labels on things. It is a Rudolph crab apple, Malice Rudolph, and it gives me such joy uh, because the colour is so intense, and then there's beautiful bronze leaves. And uh, I've got another one at the other end of the garden, and I'm hoping to get a third. I I'm, I know where I want to put it. I'm just hoping that the space will remain free. I think um, I'm sure it would, and it's always good to have if you can if there's room in life to have three of something in a garden. Yeah, it gives you a triangle, which is almost a circle, which feels very welcoming. Yeah, if the you other look, one is through the gate there. You see, there's the pink <laughs> of the other one. This is I love the way you've made this. This is edible slash cut flower patch. Yes, so um, so the edible, so the wild garlic obviously has spread and gone a bit bonkers, but I don't mind. And then I put in some rhubarb the other day. I went down to Dorset, and some rhubarb was going begging. So you can't quite see it, but it's just the other side of that Very wild good. garlic. So I do like. I love the idea of trotting down to the garden and collecting um, 
stuff for the for a soup or for a stew. You have to talk into the thing because I haven't brought your microphone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then this cutting patch, obviously it's full of alliums and tulips. And when they go over and die down, I shall very carefully lift them and replace them with dahlias because Oh, yeah. and are your dahlias coming on? Are they sprouting? I've got a few sprouting already. It's a bit slightly slow progress, but then it has been raining a lot here and yeah. it's very cold. Mine is slow, slow, slow. And I've got high hopes for my peonies because uh, for two years in a row they haven't, um, they haven't flowered, but I think that was because they were planted too deep. Yes, maybe. So I've rectified that. And then I've, I'm, I've got three lots of uh, Gertrude, Gertrude Jekyll. Yes. Um, which I hope is going to form a lovely line. So I'm beginning to get the hang of gardening. I wasn't a natural gardener, um, but my I had some very good friends who were, and my aunt is a good gardener, and I, it really appealed to me. Plus, I also, I love, you have, you've taken your love of really good colour and applied it. For example, your gate here. I love your bayou blue, you call it. So the Bayou Blue was a, a colour my mum chose before she died, and I'm I I very much just, just can see how beautifully it works with the green and the flowers. So I've kept it going of spraying, find, finding an approximate similar colour to spray an arch, and also these plastic white plastic chairs at the bottom. I found a spray paint that was sort of similar. So clever. And they now look less. Uh, ordinary. Well, my blue is all inspired by yours. Oh. It's not quite the same, but it's still very much your blue. And then for this wild patch, did yeah. you just did you just order, you know, 150 tulips and random colours and put them in? <laughs> yeah, I did. And also, I had some leftover bulbs, and I it's 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 very much. Um, Again, a bit like my paintings, it's work in progress. So I learn what I don't want next year. For instance, I'm not crazy about these bright red. Oh, you see, I quite am tulips. crazy about the bright red, but then it's your garden. I know. Whereas I love the purple and the white and the little pink and the um, the, the grape hyacinth. Yes. So, and look, you've got an even a snake's head fritillary in there. I know, only a few. Come back more next year, but I'm learning to be very patient. Um, I think that's the thing about the thing about gardening is it's a year-on-year -year project. It's patient, isn't it? You yeah. just have to. There's no such thing as instant garden, and there's yeah. no such thing as low maintenance garden. In the same way that there's no such thing as a free lunch. Yeah, but I also love the bluebells popping up every here and there because. You know, yeah. I just like, love the blend of, of wild and intentional I mean, planting. given there was nothing here apart from this big bay tree yeah. I, and things like you, you take a pot and put it on a stump, which stops the stump looking too stumpy, <laughs> yes. is a place for the pot and gives you height with your hydrangea. Yeah, and creates a bit more space down there. Very, very impressive. And then somewhere to sit... Here's the other malus. And the birds, you can tell it's a good garden because of the birds. And then look, here come, here come your clematis. Yes, there's a lot of, uh, uh, the only thing my mum, when it came to planting and gardening, the one thing my mum did like was privacy. So she went overboard with planting clematis. So there's a lot and it's probably quite densely planted, but we're trying to manage it. Um, so pretty and in fact down here's katie's potting bench which i know is actually the posh place we sit and have dinner in the summer yes but in the spring and the winter it's a potting bench with a mini greenhouse very successful tulips in a bar, in a bowl and you've been taking loads of cuttings these have taken really well, these hydrangeas. Yeah, I really get such a thrill from doing cuttings, actually. I just love the fact that you can expand your plants for free. It's amazing. And it's a lovely therapeutic job to do. And, and when it works, it's, it's thrilling. 
So what I've done here is it's this is a very cheap uh, mechanism I got online and the idea is to encourage the lilac and the honeysuckle to grow over it so yes again a more a, a sort of another room with a bit of privacy and then these solar lights um, work very nicely I mean it looks a bit like a Greek taverna but that's quite jolly it does in the evening it's always very sparkly yeah and then here are your you've been taking cuttings this afternoon you're right it's very it's a very zen activity I think they'll be all right. Well, but Georgie, aren't you going to tell me that I've just got too much leaf here? Well, you might, I, I would pinch, pinch out. Yeah, pinch out. Pinch out that. Yeah. All that. No, top. I'd pinch out there. Ah, you see. I left it specially <laughs> so that I could ask you. Because you knew perfectly well how to do it. <laughs> I sort of did, but sometimes it's pinching out the top and sometimes it's a different technique. The skill is to have. I get confused. The skill is to have sharp, yes. thumbnails, which is easier said than done. I sometimes would go, if the, I mean it's not hot and it's, it's and it's not too sunny, but if you wanted to, you could literally cut half, half the leaf off. Yes, I've seen that. I've often seen that. You need on... enough for it to photosynthesize, but not enough for it to wilt. Yeah. Lots of lovely seeds, lots of lovely new plants you've got. Well, I think I, I love the um, the Annabelle. Yes, because um, it's just so blousy and light, and and it's I don't know, it's it's very Colfax and Fowler somehow. Very. Oh, talking of Colfax and Fowler. So here we are in the kitchen, and then we're looking through into the dining room, and Katie. Can you tell us about these lovely curtains and how how the aesthetic in here came to be? Well, so you might instantly think, oh my God, those are so old fashioned vintage curtains. But these are the curtains I grew up with. And when I moved, my mum was diagnosed with terminal cancer. And when I moved back in with my parents to keep an eye on her, um, uh, you know, I mean, the house had not been modernised for 40 years. Um, and then after she died, I suppose part of my grieving was to say, OK, so if I'm going to live here with Dad, I'm going to make some changes. But I'm not going to make radical modern changes. I'm going to ha continue to have a conversation with my mum um, about the really starting with the curtains, the curtains she chose and referencing the colours in the curtains, the colour palette, because actually it's rather beautiful. It's a sort of bottle green, actually it's not a bottle green, it's a, it's a, hmm, what would you call it? I don't know, it's it's almost, it's like a faded. It's an emerald green and it's a, it's a, it's a, a, a pink and then there's some dark, uh, some dark red in there too. So, and you, yeah. So, <laughs> what, so what I thought was okay. I'm going to keep the curtains because you know they're expensive things. Curtains. I couldn't afford to put up new curtains or fancy new blinds. Um, but I tried to modernise the room by painting chairs that picked up on the green of the curtain. And then I've got I've done a I think it's called a signature wall where you just paint it one colour. I love it. Um, and then. I thought about making the powder pink, uh, painting the powder pink at the back of these shelves. It's so clever. Um, and then a lot of my paintings had green in them anyway, so that was started to pick up on the green. Um, the green, I always think the green is almost your signature colour, but then I want to show everybody, you went off and saw that lovely, the amazing house, Charleston. Charleston, I was really inspired by Charleston. And I, you came back. I went mad, I spent... I spent weeks, this was a, pro a lovely project where I thought, okay, I'm going to use the colours from the curtains, but um, the inspiration came from uh, many happy holidays in Ischia, where the signature fruit is a lemon. So, um, so yes, I, it sort of had many, many... It's really of... clever. It's really clever. I think it's absolutely enchanting. And I love your hodgepodge mix match of chairs. So you can give quite a formal dinner party, but the chairs are all kinds of chairs, including cushions of 
the fabric from the from the curtains. This is your dear old dad's special chair. And this was th these are uh, chair covers my mum had made, and I sort of I sort of like the fact that they soften what underneath is a very ugly chair, and it sort of tones in with the powder pink. Um, so clever, and then. This is the music room, as you can see by the piano. So there are little musical vignettes everywhere. For example, my father played the double bass in a jazz band um, and, uh, and the double bass was kept in here until our wicked Tibetan Spaniel pushed it over and it smashed to smithereens. Oh. Um, and inside were met, it was lots of letters, really letters from 40 years ago. Because I, when, as a child, I used to collect the letters from the doormat and oh. post them through the S -bend, F bend of the double bass. <laughs> and nobody ever opened them? Well, nobody knew. They, Dad couldn't understand why none of his bills were being paid. And then through the doorway, you're like, in this, very like Rachel Ashwell, who I went to see last week, who's famous for her shabby chic look that she patented really with her shops in America she also does this thing where you have a view through a door mm. and this is your skiing view because you have Swiss antecedents so my grandmother was Swiss and these are my grandmother's um, and my mother's skis here they are I'll put the light on for you does this work oh no but we can see them really well look oh so the, this is my grandmother and my mother on these very skis and oh, they were it. languishing in an attic and I sort of thought, oh, come on, they're not, no, they're, they're going to be something you hang a hat on or, you know. It's such a good idea. So you've got everything you need. You've got every hat in the world that you could possibly need. And these get worn. I mean, this is your dad's hat. Yeah, these are gloves and hats and... But then you've got the, you've got the Swiss... And the Thessaloniki Uzo and Marching Society. My, yes, my Swiss grandmother and Scottish grandfather uh, met in Greece and they lived in Greece for many years. And so my Scottish grandfather would take their American friends for m much trekking up Love mountains it. in Salonika. And then you always have, and I think this is so clever because you have so much art in the house. You hang, whenever I come, the art is hung in a different way, in a different place. But your clever thing is that you have, everything has a top line so that it can be rearranged, but have a sort of, have a shape. So wherever you go, there's art and it's very much mixed up your work, other people's work. Hold on, I'm gonna I mean, go back. Look at the view, everybody. So look, the bottom picture here, that's one of yours, Katie. That's a tulip. And then the top one is a friend of mine, Michaela. That's a little sketch, a painting uh, I bought from her. And I thought the two, sort of sat very happily but look this is but this is what other. i mean framed this is what i mean about endless still lives you've got the baskets the books the art the hats the musical instruments wherever you look there's something to draw the eye i think it's a sort of i mean if you if the, i'm sure a psychologist would say i mean coming from a very small family um, at the time of my mother's death, I really felt I wanted to gather my much loved uh, family around me. And so finding, coming across old photographs of my grandparents climbing mountains and, you know, just, I just loved bringing them back into the room and continuing to think about them. Um, but also trying to trying to do it artistically, trying to create a conversational point, maybe if anybody's interested. But certainly for me, I love looking at it. I love it. I love it. I love, I love. For example, the picture. You always do this, it, and it, again, like Rachel's house, because nothing's in the same place when I come, because you've been playing, not playing, but you've been playing housey housey, so. This picture, I was here last weekend and that picture was not there. So that's not by me, that's by um, a local artist uh, called Kat Tamlin. And I bought it last weekend because I think the colours immediately spoke to me from this room. Absolutely. And also it's an enchanting, lovely picture. Yeah, it's lovely. And look at those tulips, who gave me those? <laughs> I can't imagine I mean, where you got those from. Gave me those? But look at the little musical mice and then... You, did you say these are your pair, your mother's I think musical these are my people? My mother's little musical people. 
aren't they enchanting? Apart from the top of a shoe and the, and one ear. They um, dance on. Yeah, they dance on. And oh, look at people. And then these guys came from uh, South Africa. I was a great, I did a lot of traveling um, between the age of 30 and 45. So that's, that's to inspire my dad. And my yeah, dad, band. my dad still loves his jazz and he has singing lessons and he, he tunes, he tunes in with his true tone pitch pipe. I love that. Was that a, um, that's a, uh, what's it called? Mouth it's a organ. harmonica, yeah. Oh, brilliant. So I he, love that. He finds the note and then, oh, so the music lives on. Tell us about this piece, Katie. So that's another new acquisition, again, from a local artist. I run um, a group um, of local artists and it's basically, it's part friendship, but it's part sort of looking to create more artistic opportunities in my neighborhood. And um, and this is by a very talented artist called Belinda Shaw. And she, it's, um, it's embroidery, collaged material and stitching. And she's also uh, a great jazz fan. And this is C major. So these are, um, you know, it's a piano. It's the notes on the scale. No, I'm new these piano pieces. Oh, look, clever. Yeah. Look at your hands. <laughs> oh, gardening hands. Horrible. No. I just had to show you. This is the loo. And look, this is the Swiss loo. Everything Swiss is in here. The Swiss relatives, very, very glamorous. Look at that beautiful lady smiling. Is that your grandmother? My grandmother, my Swiss grandmother. So the story behind this loo is that basically it's very new. There was never a downstairs loo in this house. And I insisted that there should be one. And my mum used to say, oh, for God, don't, te don't tell anybody you're, you're Swiss or because people are so rude about the Swiss, just don't say anything. And I'm afraid the one thing I did when my mum died is I thought, oh, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to celebrate <laughs> my Swissness. <laughs> I'm very proud of my Swissness. My mum was, and so I'm saying to my mum, look, it's okay, mum. We can do this together. I love it. And this is my favourite thing. Every time I come in here, I love this. <laughs> this is a book published by um, publishers I work for. Oh, love it. Love it. And even your Swiss tennis player. And Look I at love him. this. This is my grandmother and grandfather with her parents. And the Matterhorn, is that? It looks, yeah, it looks very much like Zermatt with the Matterhorn behind them. Wow. Yeah. Oh, love it. Lovely view of the, um, of the, of the pink. Crab apple behind. It's basically, you've got this pink and green theme with highlights of the strong blue. And those are your... I loved talking to Rachel last week about her palette and you have a palette and your palette is quite strong. Tones of this pinky raspberry colour, but also the green. It's really... And then look, everybody, what I really love is this line so that the pictures move and get moved around, but they all have the same top line so that you you can juggle them around but the top line is there and there's, that's Katie's dad and Katie's lovely dog. I mean, to be fair, it's something I've learned because I exhibit my paintings. Um, it's, it's something you learn quite early on when you put up your paintings for shows is that you establish a top line and then try to have equal gaps around it. So but clever. With this, I wanted to, I think the fun of having a gallery wall is to have it very eclectic um so um it's a really good idea i think it's and it is never the same two random. weeks in a row that i come you yeah. move them around <laughs> and very, then a very very comfortable sofa which is always necessary now look okay so here is katie's bathroom now again clever let's not spend huge amounts of money little bit of sorry fabric this is a, yeah i found this sorry fabric in my mom's collection of fabrics and it was so pretty. Um, and then also I found a lot of this gingham. Look at this. It's a pink and green, pink and green, pink and green. 
all pink and green and look the door for some reason was always glass like that and it had a rack oh horrible old bamboo thing so yeah and i think it's i think the trend of, i mean i'm very interested in interior design in the same way that i'm, in, I'm interested in painting i think there are it evolves and there are different sort of tones and fashion and moods and i currently love the the mixing up of patterns yes and not being matchy matchy but you know keeping the palette compatible yeah but you see even in your sweater <laughs> sorry everybody <laughs> the sweater is green and pink <laughs> Everything. not so much the t-shirt but the sweater is pink and green <laughs> oh, okay i long to see your bed so we're just styling the bed to make it look bit... <laughs> so tell me katie what happened with the bed head so I discovered um, a, a fabric designer called Charlotte Gaysford and what she's um, based up north in England, in Northumbria. And what I loved about her designs was that not only did they, can you mix and match them with, with some of my existing, or my, my mum's existing Colfax and Fowler, but also they interchange with her own fabrics and they're very fresh. And it just, I just loved it. So... I don't think I've done this quite right, and I'm sure Charlotte Gaysford will uh, sigh deeply because I've not got the pattern up the right way round. But I just um, covered a, a bed head. And did you staple it? Is it literally yeah. stapled on? Oh, I do love a staple gun. I mean, look how clever. You can do anything with a staple gun. But I have to tell you, I'm not, I don't think it's quite the white ray, white, but I don't, but so don't look too closely. I know, I think it's fantastic. And I love, you can tell, look, this is a book. This is a lady who likes a book. Would you look at the bedside table? It's a small children's chair, painted again green and piled <laughs> with books and the Royal Academy magazine. And look, you can have a view out of the garden from here. Here's, a, here's another gallery wall. Again, you know, part uh, friends' paintings, one or two of mine, um, some pictures of my family, just to keep them, and dogs. And then this is my mum's Robert's radio. She had a radio in every room. Um, and um, and we, actually, no, we gave this to her when she was in hospital just to keep her company because she loved the radio. And I then decided to have it in my room. And the weird thing is, is that without touching it or tuning it, it comes on without being invited to at seven o'clock every morning. Uh, and then it goes off without being invited to at nine o'clock, but not on Saturday or Sunday. And I, I think, think it's, that's it's astonishing. Saying it's time to get up now. Come on. This is the time I got up. I love that. Get up. That's it. That's you and your mum are just keeping an eye on each other. Yeah. It's the, it's the spooky radio. Oh. <laughs> this is, here's the little Miss P looking out the window in case of foxes or very exciting other intruders particularly tea cake who generally doesn't get brought to london because she's not trusted look we're in the hot so it's a real shame that the the picture the you can't see the garden through there but it is so lovely and look here's katie, katie in a self-portrait wearing it looks like a dirndl <laughs> you look very glamorous katie in your beautiful look with little Miss P. Oh, Katie, thank you so much for letting us look around your beautiful garden and see your gorgeous house and all the beautiful, I think we've agreed, the colour is a sort of silvery green that we see everywhere. I love a bluey green. A bluey I green. A green that's not a acid green, a blue green is my favourite thing. And a, and a, and a, a sort of deep raspberry colour. Yes. And then a flash of blue. <laughs> I love it. Look, these are the chairs that have been sprayed blue. You don't, you don't have to spend a fortune. More, they get a, a little, a few more patches sprayed. Do you just, yeah, you just spray a bit more on them. Yeah, I just sort of cover up a bit more. It's brilliant. Oh, Katie, thank you so much for having us. Oh, you're very welcome. I enjoyed it. And I will put Katie's website in the blurb for anybody who'd like to visit it. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. I love this room. Even the next morning, look. The light is very beautiful. It doesn't film that well, but it is. You have to take my word for it. So the question is, if Katie's palette is 
green and pink. You know, pink going all the way down to dark raspberry and green being all kinds of green, but especially a slightly silvery green with a touch of blue, like with the painted, painted work outside, that lovely rich blue. So there's, there's Katie's palette. Pink, green and blue. Do you have a palette? And if you do, what is it? I think if I could be said to have a palette, it would be red <laughs> and orange and pink. But I'm not sure that's true. And I think it's really worth going to have a look and see what colours I what colours I use as the background for my life. What colours do you use as the background for your life? And can you think why? I think it's such an interesting question. Anyway, do put comments and um I hope this will be the beginning of an interesting discussion. Thanks very much for visiting. I'll see you.